What is going on, guys? In this video, we're going to find out why this little coffee grinder here is, in fact, I think the best all-rounder coffee grinder for you at home. Stay tuned in this video. Let's go. So if you stumble upon this uh, video, you would have already known a little bit about this coffee grinder. Well, this coffee grinder is a DF64, or some would call it the G Iota. And it has different names in different places, but generally it looks the same. It comes from the same manufacturer. This little machine here, it's built in China. I think it carries its inspiration from the Lagom coffee grinders, which is shaped similar to this, um, um, similar shape, and it's a single dose coffee grinder. So let's first talk about the price. The price for this coffee grinder starts at 1,400 ringgit Malaysia, right? So 1,400 ringgit, you can get a whole package of coffee grinder with its uh, burr, steel, steel burr set inside, and I think it's a fairly good burr, 64 millimeter uh, flat burr. Well, if you want to upgrade, there are upgraded options where you can pay uh, 1,700 for a titanium version. You can even go all the way to the SSP version, and you can get it for $2,100, right? And that's the price point that I found here in Malaysia. Um, the official supplier is carried by Jay Coffee. I'll put his number or WhatsApp link down in the video below, and you can see the spec sheets and even contact them if you are looking for this grinder. But let's get this out of the way. First, I have to say disclaimer, not paid, not sponsored, bought this on our own. So price is out of the way. Now let's talk about the burst sets in here. The burr set that you can find in here is a 64 millimeter steel burr. It's a pretty good steel burr. Um, in my year and a half experience with this grinder, I've grinded with espresso coffee grounds from dark roast, medium roast, all the way to light roast. And the good thing about this grinder, it can also grind fairly decent pour over coffees. So if you are a person that does both like me at home, Depends on the time, I prefer espresso-based coffee. Sometimes I prefer a batch brew a, or a pour-over. Um, this coffee grinder does the job because it has quite a right, wide range. So if you look at the indicator here, it ranges from zero all the way to 90. So you can see the, the, the range of it is pretty wide, so it's pretty good and uh, it can be utilized pretty well in all different settings. The one thing that I will note is that if you go all the way to the widest setting, um, the uniformity of the coffee grounds is pretty much not not in existence anymore. Just because I think the burr sets together are too far apart. And when that happens, you just get random random grinds that are very coarse, of course, but um, not not recommended for a pour over, right? It, the pour over range for me, it's somewhere in between uh, 60 to 75. That's, that's the max I would go. And for espresso base with this original steel burr, um, my espresso base, depending on the roast level and the type of uh, bean, it goes from zero all the way to 10. So that's where the espresso range comes from. Um, either in that, I usually don't use anywhere from 10 to 50 because that range is just uh, uh, not not usable unless I'm doing an AeroPress or so on. So very good coffee grinder for both espresso and filter, right? And obviously this coffee grinder has been a trend in the market just due because, just due because of the single dose grinder, right? It's a single dose with a hopper right here. You can have this on or you can not have this on. It's up to you. But I always have this on just, just because I don't want to lose this uh, a hopper, right? Or this blow up, hop, uh, blow up grinder. Um, what this does is now your question would, be, uh, would ask me is how does it do with retention, right? Throughout my experience, if I were to put in 18 grams, generally without the blow up hopper, I would always typically lose about one gram. So if I put 18 grams in it, um, typically 17 grams, 17.1, 17.2 comes out. Now, with the blow-up hopper, if I were to press it and the remaining would come out, I would generally get a pretty good retention. Uh, you get about 18 grams or so uh, out. So it's one-to-one, -one, but um, if you've seen J James Hoffman's video, um, it's recommended not for you to push out the blow-up hopper into your dosing cup just because um, there would be fine grinds that would be stuck in it and they would be overly fine with those remaining that came out, that comes out. So the recommendation for me is if you want to get a clean and not muddy cup, right, just um, overdose it slightly. So if you want to dose 18 grams, maybe put a 19 grams, 19.5, uh, put it in, right, and you generally get about 18 or so. And then after you take out your dosing cup, then you can maybe press and get the remaining out. Um, so that's more recommended for espresso, right? Um, so... It, it does it, it does it is pretty good for a single dose grinder. I would say it's retention. It's not uh, too worrying about. If you're not particular about it, go ahead and press up the 
the pillow out hopper and get your 18 grams that you put in, right? And it's out. Now, let's mention about the pros of this grinder. This grinder can grind both espresso and filter very well. I don't think you can find anything within this price range and this budget that can do both with a single dose grinder exceptionally well. So this is a pretty good value for money grinder for home use, right? And I would even argue, even for those of you who own a cafe, if you have a single origin, maybe a micro lot or something that's unique that you would like to offer your customers, but you don't have many grinding options, this grinder, pretty good. You can use it, dose however much you want in, take it out, make it a filter, make a pour over, make a espresso. This grinder works. And so um, it's pretty good, but it's just that obviously it takes longer to grind 18 grams compared to a commercial grinder. Um, so that's the pro about this grinder. I really love it, and I think um, not much uh, quirks can be said about this grinder, right? Um, let's talk about the cons now. Well, one of the cons that, uh, that I, I, I experience at least is that um, the shaft, chaff would always come out of a grinder if you do not use a WDT or a, uh, you know, a uh, wetting the, the grinds a little bit first before you pour in your grinder, uh, your coffee. Um, there would be chaff flying all over, but it's not too big of an issue because generally I'll just clean up whatever the mess there are over there and then head on with my day. Another thing, another con about this is I've said that it's easy to access the burr chamber, but the issue that I find constantly is that if you look at the burr sets here and if you look internally, right, um, the grinder has lots of empty space. And when you have lots of empty space in your grinder, it just costs a mess because coffee grounds would just find any empty space it can and it would just try to go in. And I'll just take a snapshot of uh, uh, one of the cleaning, one of my cleaning sessions with this particular grinder. And you can see it's pretty bad um, just because uh, um, of all the empty space it has. And not only that, another con that I generally find when compared to other home grinders is that um, right underneath the burr, uh, 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 the burr set itself, um, I would typically find more coffee grounds typically than other coffee grinders. So that uh, it's a pretty uh, a bad con for it. Um, but if you're a person that cleans your grinder regularly, it shouldn't be much of a problem. So basically, if you don't clean your grinder for six months or a year, <laughs> you would definitely be able to tell because this grinder would get dirty. Um, one of the last con that I have with this is that when this comes stock like that, the burrs are generally very badly, uh, poor, very poorly aligned. It's not aligned properly. And most of the times you can see hacks on YouTube, on, on forums and stuff like that on how people would align the burr sets. I think just because due to it's the first version and maybe tolerance issue and, and, and quality assurance issue, when it comes like that, it doesn't have the best, um, um, it doesn't have the best alignment. So you might face when you first receive this grinder, you might face a lot of inconsistency, but um, try to align your burst. You can find multiple uh, videos that show you how to align this burst. Um, and then with time over time, once your bursts are seasoned, once everything is set in, generally speaking, this grinder works like a charm. Now, also another thing is that this grinder is held in by springs and I do not prefer spring loaded grinds just because I think they are um, just a big headache to deal with. Let me show you what I mean by this, right? Okay. So you see now it doesn't have any sound, but when I press on it, the sound appears just because this is a spring-loaded mechanism. So when there's a spring in it, it tends to be a little inconsistent when you uh, put in the coffee grounds. Look, listen again. So it's it's it's. It's a common problem. The niche also has a spring loaded, but I think it's not as obvious just due to the sheer uh, largeness of this uh, uh, ring here. But um, that's one of the con, right? Last but not least, uh, not a very big con for me, but just a, a minor issue is that it doesn't have, well, it's really hard to read where the dial indicator is. There are lots of modifications that are done, right? Where they put an indicator here, but mine comes with stock. And so I'm just reviewing it, it's stock. Um, so it doesn't have that, that setting, but most of the times um, I can just ballpark it and, and kind of know where um, the grinds would end up. So conclusion, is this good for you? Is this suitable for you? Who is this grinder for? Well, I would say that if you are a person that is just uh, uh, entering the espresso or specialty uh, market, coffee market and you have a 
a, a good enough or a decent enough of an espresso machine and you're looking for something that is a single dose grinder for home use that is good enough to make espresso or make filtered coffee right every one or two cups a day um, well this is definitely a coffee grinder to go for um, obviously when you purchase it it will already be the fourth to the fifth version that would come out they have actually come up with a newer model which is the df 64 p or e and that grinder will probably reveal it in a separate time but that grinder um in general consensus it's more um, espresso based focus because it doesn't have such of a wide range as this df 64 uh, uh grinder so i recommend you to get it i love this grinder they still been using it tried different grinders the eureka the minon the Fiorenzato at the shop um even this grinder here and I think this is a perfect pair for a just a morning cup of coffee or the afternoon uh, filtered pour over. This grinder does pretty well. And one thing about it is it has a huge community where there's upgrade modifications and you can just purchase them or do it yourself. And um, very good grinder uh, for the money. So if you're that person, go get yourself one and enjoy brewing delicious cup of coffee. Until next time, subscribe and like. Thank you.